Hello and welcome to today's webinar. We'll be discussing the important role that managed detection and response can play in ensuring cloud transformation success on AWS. My name is Dan Webb. I'm the Vice President of Global Partner Sales and Alliances at AlertLogic. I've been in the security industry for 18 years now. I've spent a large portion of that time working directly with organizations who are looking to embrace cloud transformation and helping them address security and their security responsibilities to really enable that success. I'm joined today by two esteemed speakers, Alison Johnson of AWS and Stephen Boyle of SHI. So I'd love to hand over to you now, Alison and Stephen, to introduce yourselves to the audience. Hi, everyone. I'm Alison Johnson. I'm a senior manager in the AWS Marketplace team. Um, our team works with uh, all types of consulting partners as they are working with their customers on Marketplace. And I'm really excited to be here today with AlertLogic and SHI. Stephen? Thanks, Alison, and I'm Stephen Boyle. I'm the Senior Vice President of Strategic Partners at SHI, uh, and I'm really pleased and honored to be here alongside AWS and AlertLogic. Dan, thanks for the invitation. Uh, great to be here, looking forward to this webinar. Fantastic, thank you both, and delighted to have your company for this webinar as well. All right, so just before we get going here, a little bit of background about our respective organizations. Uh, so first and foremost, starting off with uh, AlertLogic, uh, we are in the managing detection and response space within the security industry. As the name suggests, that means our organization works tirelessly 24 seven to help our customers detect and respond to a wide range of threats that might be facing their business. We've also enjoyed a pretty unique relationship with Amazon Web Services over the years and really been at the forefront of cloud security, going all the way back to 2011 when we were asked to bring the first AWS cloud workload under our protection. And we've really evolved uh, ever since then to ensure that we're doing everything we can to help organizations embrace the full potential of the AWS cloud uh, by addressing their security responsibilities. So that's a little bit about us. I'd love to uh, hand over to Alison and Stephen to uh, give a bit of background background about their respective organizations and the role they play in enabling cloud success. Sure, AWS is the leader in public cloud infrastructure for all customer sizes, developers, small, medium-sized businesses on up to enterprise. We're about 20 years old, um, evolved from the structure and support that we uh, provided to Amazon.com as they were scaling very quickly um, in, in becoming an online seller. and. Um, Stephen, you want to talk about SHI? Thanks, Alison. Yeah, um, you know, SHI has been um, in the US and indeed in international markets for the best part of 30 years. Um, we're one of the largest IT integrators in, uh, in many of those markets. What a lot of people don't probably know, and we're going to get into more detail today, is we've actually been building a really strong security practice uh, for about the last 10 years. So as an $11 billion integrator, about one and a half billion dollars of that revenue comes from a specific focus on cybersecurity. And, and that's why I'm really pleased to be here today uh, with both AWS and Alert, who are two of uh, my most important, our most important strategic partners. Thanks, Thank, you. Thank you both. So, Stephen, if you, if you don't mind kicking us off by maybe helping to share some of the challenges that you see organizations face, and also sharing some details around how SHI uh, in the role of trusted advisor is able to help them navigate those challenges. I'd love to. So um, let's set the scene, and I'm not sure honestly um, for anybody we need to make this statement that we live in one of the most complicated and complex worlds um, that most of us, probably all of us have, have ever seen. Um, and I'm not just talking about the technology, but I'm talking about everything that happened in 2020 and, and still uh, is happening all around us. But we know um, from some you know, very uh, august analysts out there uh, that we live in a multi-cloud world. Um, we live in a hybrid world. Uh, we know that our customers, uh, large and small, are dependent upon services that are provided um, by AlertLogic, by AWS, and, and, and many other uh, vendors in the, in the high-tech space. And we also know, uh, because we read it in the press every day, and we see our country leaders talking about it at, at that level, that cybersecurity is undoubtedly one of the biggest challenges um, that we face in, in the whole technology industry uh, to secure our, our personal data, uh, as well as our corporate and company data, wherever it may reside. So as this uh, slide demonstrates, we, uh, you know, we have to solve for these problems, and that's one of the reasons why we're here today, uh, to show you that between AlertLogic, 
AWS and SHI, we have the right tools, we have the right services and the right platforms uh, to address these, these challenges and, uh, and help your business outcomes to, uh, to get them to where they need to be uh, as we go through this digital transformation period that we're in right now. Next slide, please, Dan. So I think I've already mentioned, I, I would be fair to say, is an ever-changing threat landscape. Um, it's very dynamic. Um, it's very robust. I shouldn't congratulate the people who operate in this space, but um, there are some awfully clever people out there um, challenging us on a daily basis to uh, to secure our environments much much more greatly than we've ever had to do before. Uh, of course, 2020 changed the world in so many different ways. Um, it also, as it says on the slide, it reduced our visibility because it pushed people away from those centers that arguably were easier to uh, to secure out into remote working locations where the number of endpoints uh, dramatically increased uh, and therefore the security challenges that went along with living in a, not just in a hybrid cloud world, but living in a hybrid workplace world uh, brought to us as well. The other thing is, you know, we can't skill and train up people fast enough in all parts of the high tech industry. And, and that's a big challenge that starts with uh, all of our education systems and of all of our respective companies um, helping our employees and our most most valuable assets um, get better at what they do and adding to their skill sets um, anywhere we, where we can find uh, opportunity to automate. Uh, the management and the implementation of these systems, I think will bring um, added benefit to uh, to the systems overall. We, we still need people and we need those people to be well trained, uh, but we need to look for uh, ways to automate at the same time. And then the other thing that happens and, and seems to happen at, a, at an increasing pace is the sheer volume of options that exist in the market uh, to solve what appear to be very complex and, and, and similar challenges. So. Uh, we as SHI over the years have dealt with thousands of different IT uh, organizations and we're experts at, at getting through many of those and selecting the, the right partnerships uh, for the right customers in the right environment. But uh, certainly that's, that's something that we've spent a lot of time in cybersecurity alone over the last 10 years, uh, figuring out the best partnerships to bring to our joint customers. Um, and that's why we're here today with Alert Logic and AWS. Uh, Next next slide, please, Dan. So why SHI? Many of you might know SHI is a very transactionally oriented partner. Hopefully I've begun to open the door on the many other things that I can do for you around services, around managed services and professional services, especially in the area of cybersecurity, which is what we're here to talk about today. Um, we are we, ha we have our own centers of excellence around cybersecurity that can help with selection. As I mentioned, there's an awful lot of vendors out there who claim that they can do the things that you as a customer might need them to do. Um, we're also able to stay with you through that deployment phase to make sure that whatever solutions and systems that you put in place to impact those business outcomes that I mentioned earlier on, we're there, you know, seven by 24 with you to help you manage, to help you implement uh, the, the systems going forward. So I'd like you to think of not us, uh, SHI, not just as a transactional partner, but somebody who can come in at the advisory stage and make sure that you make the right selections that can stay with you through the implementation stage and make sure that the systems work as they were intended and as you require. And ultimately that we manage to those business outcomes that you require um, I think it was Gartner that said that, you know, the CISO is his job, his or her job is changing um, to really impact the business outcomes on an increasing basis. Uh, that used to be formerly the role of the CIO. Now you have to include the CISO in that statement as well. So we're striving to impact the business outcome. We're striving to help you at each stage of, uh, of the selection, deployment and management of those solutions. Uh, and as I said before, that's the reason why we're on this webinar, and that's the part that we play alongside Alert Logic and AWS in everything that we're trying to achieve uh, for and on behalf of our joint customers. So I really appreciate the opportunity, Dan. I'm going to pass the, uh, the the speaking opportunity back to you, and look forward to the rest of the webinar. Excellent, thank you, Stephen. And that's absolutely the experience I've had in working side by side with SHI and AWS to enable those outcomes for businesses together. So long may that continue.
So I thought I'd zoom back out for a second here and just talk a little bit about some of the environmental factors that we see you know, impacting organisations uh, today, especially as they're starting to work towards embracing uh, cloud and cloud transformation. Um, so first and foremost, you know, digital transformation is typically a, a you know, tremendously positive experience for a business to go through. It gets you closer to your customers, it gives competitive advantage, but it does introduce risk just by definition because it introduces change. Anytime something changes, it means that you need to adapt quickly to address any kind of inherent risks that might come with that change. So that's something that a lot of organizations are going through today as they aggressively pursue the positive outcomes that digital transformation offers their business and, and their customers, understanding how that's going to impact them, and what changes and adaptations they need to make to ensure that they're not introducing risk to their business is a very important challenge for them to overcome. I think you talked about this a little, Stephen. You know, the talent shortage, I think, is, is pretty well known at this point. Uh, there's certainly more open cybersecurity jobs than there are uh, you know, folks to fill them. And it looks like that's going to continue for some time here. So, uh, you know, understanding really as an organization whether it makes sense for you to really try and build out that security competency in your business or whether it makes more sense for you to focus on your core line of business and really look to have other ways to get the outcomes that might come from having an in-house approach to security is a decision point that you need to come to and make a right decision. Uh, I think, Stephen, you also touched on this as well. And, uh, you know, being kind of uh, in the security industry for the amount of time I, I've, I've been in it, I feel like I can say this without getting myself in too much trouble, but the industry really has been part of the problem for a number of years. And if you've ever walked the floor of one of the major trade shows, you know, there's an overwhelming number of different vendors out there with very similar stories, very similar approaches. But, you know, for the most part, they're all going to offer you a fairly different experience. And just navigating that as a consumer of security technology to really understand what you need, why you need it, how you're going to consume it, what outcomes you're going to get from it, uh, you know, requires a, a master's degree in uh, <laughs> understanding the industry. So it, it's, uh, it's a challenge and it's adding to the complexity and I think we can all do better to help uh, you know, avoid that outcome. And then, you know, ultimately, the bad guys keep getting better at what they do, right? They're, they're as, uh, you know, uh, interested in digital transformation as, as you are, uh, but for, you know, very different outcomes, right? So they're leveraging technology advancements. They're looking at, you know, new methods and techniques at all times. They're becoming ever more advanced, uh, ever more resourced. And as a result, it means a continuous evolving threat that you need to be taking account of and, uh, and adapting to accordingly. Now, putting that to the side and thinking about cloud adoption itself, really we kind of see three core phases uh, of the cloud journey. And obviously at each of those stages, you need to be taking into account the role security needs to play and what you're thinking through. So migration, whether that's taking something that exists today out of uh, you know, maybe a data center and moving it into the cloud, or if it's taking you know, an idea from uh, a concept into execution and launching your first you know, application or, or workload in a new startup type environment. Either way, you really need to be considering what are the uh, implications for me as I move that workload to the cloud? How do I really kind of embrace and adopt cloud in the early stages whilst you know, moving forward in a safe way and making sure that I'm not creating a situation that can negatively impact my business or, or my customers? Once you've really kind of had that first experience of the power of the cloud, organizations typically start to move fast towards modernization uh, opportunities, whether that's application modernization, embracing microservices, anything that's really going to have a transformative effect on the business uh, and you know, bring back to you uh, economic gains, efficiency gains, uh, the ability to, to go and you know, deliver applications and outcomes in a way that was fundamentally different to how you had done it before. At this point, it's really all about velocity. How can I keep going without security becoming a barrier or something that's going to impede my progress and slow me down? And then you know, the final kind of stage was a continuous process, really, a continuous improvement uh, exercise is around the optimization or continual optimization of your cloud workloads. How can I get those additional efficiencies by making sure I'm putting the right workloads in the right place and continuously looking for ways to you know, increase the capacity of my organization? This is you know, a, a point where you might find yourself making a large fundamental uh, decision, like do I decide to continue with an in-house strategy for security versus maybe looking at yeah, an approach like managed detection and response to give me back some of that operational efficiency and I can go and repurpose those resources at them somewhere else. So these are kind of three core phases of cloud adoption and obviously security plays an absolutely critical role in each and should continue to do so throughout. So it all really starts with the concept of shared security responsibility and uh, hopefully this is a fairly familiar concept for those of you on the line, but if not, not to worry. It really kind of centers, as the name suggests, around an understanding that in order for you to secure your organization as you migrate to the cloud, 
there's a combined effort between the cloud platform provider, in this case, AWS, who's really responsible for the security of the cloud platform itself, right? They're providing you with the building blocks to go and build your cloud business um, and making sure that all the underlying components and services and aspects that they're bringing to the table to enable you to do that are inherently secure. And they work very, very hard to do that and have uh, some incredible capabilities at their disposal to ensure that. As soon as you start leveraging that platform to build out your workloads and applications and start to run your business in the cloud, you're then inheriting a bunch of responsibilities that you need to find the best possible way for your business to address. Now, this is one way to kind of view that set of responsibilities as you kind of work your way from the cloud platform up through the network layer into the hosts and up to the application layer. Um, you know, we've kind of visualized this in a way that breaks it down into some required security capabilities. Some of these are really kind of policy decisions. Some of these are more you know, technology and operational capabilities that you need to adapt uh, and make sure that you've solved for. But it's just, you know, there's a very wide set of responsibilities that you need to be thinking about. So if you're looking at this for the first time and thinking, wow, okay, I didn't realize there was so much responsibility on my part as I moved to the cloud, you know, have no fear because you're not necessarily in a position where you have to go and address those responsibilities on your own. And that's really where organizations like SHI and Alert Logic come in to really help you understand that there are different approaches. One of those approaches might be to look towards a managed detection and response solution like Alert Logic that allows you to offset a number of those heavy lift operational responsibilities to experts who have been doing this for a very, very long time, have the technology, have the integrations with the AWS native services, have the human expertise, intelligence, content, operational experience to really do a very, very good job of that, allowing you to then focus on your core competencies uh, and to really kind of just you know, remain, uh, have the security responsibilities remain with you that makes sense for you to manage through more as a kind of policy uh, exercise for your business. Uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how we can do that together. So kind of going back to the phases of cloud adoption and helping you understand you know, how Alert Logic and SHI can bring value to you through those various stages. Uh, firstly, on the migration front, you know, the number one challenge we see folks running into uh, is a lack of expertise that we've spoken about. There is a resource gap uh, of finding folks with not just security expertise, but cloud security expertise. At this point, you're now kind of unicorn hunting, right? They're very, very rare, uh, very expensive, very hard to maintain. So, uh, you know, don't allow that to be a barrier to migration and getting you know, yourselves into a position where you can start to embrace, uh, you know, the full kind of potential of the AWS cloud. Make sure that you can trust experts like the experts that Alert Logic brings to the table to address any gaps you have in that skill set so that you can move forward with confidence and know that you know, whatever workloads you're going to put onto the cloud, you, you have trusted experts behind you that are going to be maintaining their security at all times. Another common challenge we run into at the migration stage is the need to manage security <laughs> responsibility across multiple workloads. Now, that could be uh, a scenario where you have a traditional environment on premise or, or you know, in a data center potentially being managed by a third party, and now you're starting to move workloads to the cloud. Now, what you don't want to have to find yourselves is in a situation where you're reliant on multiple different approaches to address the security responsibilities that come with each of those environments. Ultimately, what you want is a single approach to security with a single lens across all of the areas that you need visibility into, and you know, maintaining that protection, protection consistently 24 seven across those environments. So having a single platform that can scale across really all configurations of, of hybrid multi-cloud uh, and traditional environments as well as uh, cloud only is a real superpower of alert logics and something that we've done for a number of customers. So if that's a concern, then this is a great approach to addressing that at the migration stage. And then another key piece that, that people have to think through as they're starting to migrate workloads is if you're in an industry that requires you to maintain uh, compliance with uh, you know, regulatory compliance standards or even just internal compliance best practices that you have, as you start to fundamentally shift uh, the way your organization consumes infrastructure and IT, are you able to maintain that compliant posture and making sure that you are investing in a solution that brings everything together for you so that your people, combined with the tools, technology, processes, operational excellence that Alert Logic's bringing to the table, can then maintain those compliance standards regardless of how that evolves over time. So really allowing you to prevent a situation where you're a positive endeavor for your business uh, you know, could potentially uh, come back and bite you because you haven't considered the impact it's going to have on your compliant posture and could expose customer data or you to you know, regulatory penalties or audit risk. And here's an example of an organization that Alert Logic helped through a, a cloud migration and continues to support today. Uh, so Rent-A-Center is a, a retailer, hopefully one that's uh, fairly familiar to you in the audience here. 
Uh, we've been working for them uh, with them for a number of years here. Uh, they have an environment that spans across really the full spectrum. They have some traditional, uh, you know, IT assets and data centers. They're you know leveraging Amazon Web Services as well as other cloud platforms. And really, what they were looking for was a way to ensure that as they started to approach my migration, they had you know security built in at all times. Uh, and had you know really a very robust answer to those those security responsibilities that we shared with you across multiple platforms. But whilst you know maintaining a desire to run a pretty lean IT team, they certainly didn't want to invest heavily in uh, a large security operations function that was just going to be dedicated to that. And that's a pretty common uh, challenge that we saw for organisations even prior to 2020. And obviously, once uh, the pandemic came along and changed the world, as, as you put it, Stephen, you know that just kind of exacerbated that 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 need. Um, for organizations to really try and operate as lean as possible in those scenarios. Um, so at NetNet, we were able to help them overcome that challenge as well as uh, a number of compliance specific challenges they had around Sarbanes-Oxley and PCI DSS. Uh, we gave them visibility across all of those environments, a single kind of pane of glass and a single solution. Uh, and you know, we were told by Rent Center that it actually led to them having coverage that would have been the equivalent of them going and hiring six full-time employees who would have been responsible for the same set of duties that we were carrying out for them. And it ultimately enabled them to move towards a cloud-first strategy, which was a major business objective for them. And a great quote there from their VP of Information Security, really just talking about those uh, you know, cost and operational efficiencies that we were able to deliver for them. And by the way, this is a public uh, case study. It's available on our website, uh, alertlogic.com. So feel free to go there and check that out alongside a number of other case studies that we have for you. So shifting from migration into modernization, uh, here really you're looking to ensure that your cloud program is going to be a long-term success. Right? And I've seen a number of organizations kind of fall into the trap of uh, you know, having a kind of short-term mindset around you know, migration is everything, let's just get there, and then you know, it's all just going to kind of work out the way we hoped for without considering the longer-term view of how is this going to evolve over time, what changes do I need to make as I step through the different phases of the journey, uh, and ultimately falling into the trap of allowing for bad kind of forward planning to undermine the overall program and set them back one, one, two, three years, uh, almost kind of back to the start all over again. So making sure that you're really understanding, you know, the long-term view of where the business wants to go, how cloud is going to enable uh, those outcomes, and making sure that you're, uh, you know, investing in a solution and a partnership that's going to be able to evolve with you as your business and IT needs evolve. Um, <clears throat> being able to address risks as they, uh, you know, become apparent as you make those transformation changes uh, and understanding the difference between, for example, managing vulnerabilities and exposures in a, you know, infrastructure as a service environment versus in a containerized environment. You know, it's a great example of a, a risk management challenge that might come along in the modernization phase to make sure that you're able to quickly identify you know, those, those risks and uh, work to define processes uh, that will allow you to then you know, mitigate those risks and allow you to move forward with these you know, next stages of the transformation journey. Uh, without creating exposures that somebody can take advantage of and uh, and obviously lead to a negative consequence for your organization. Um, and then, you know, obviously accelerating the adoption of these game-changing technologies. I, I referenced containers earlier. That's a great example. You know, we've seen a number of customers kind of get to this stage, run headfirst into uh, containerization, and then, you know, realize that they hadn't thought through how that would transform, you know, a number of processes on their side. Uh, some of the visibility gaps that might come from that if they didn't have the, the right kind of technologies and solutions in place. And again, AlertLogic has a solution that allows you to adopt those uh, disruptive technologies like containers and you know, modernize your web applications confidently, knowing that you're still going to maintain that visibility, still going to be able to have the same or better level of, of protection and reduce you know, vulnerabilities and exposures consistently throughout that journey. So it's really about you know, ensuring that security is a positive enabler uh, of that transformation as opposed to an inhibitor and something that's going to slow teams down that really want to get to those outcomes as soon as possible. Uh, a customer that we've worked on a modernization program with is Chess Health. Uh, they're a SaaS organization uh, that supports a number of healthcare companies, uh, and they are all in on Amazon Web Services. So once again, you'll see a consistent theme here. They had some uh, pretty significant compliance uh, mandates and requirements that they had to address. Uh, HIPAA and high trust, very commonplace in the healthcare industry. Uh, they really needed to uh, kind of start their journey with enterprise scale uh, security, you know, the types of capabilities that come from you having built out your own security operations center and operated it for a number of years. They didn't have the luxury of being able to do that, but they needed the same quality of security. So enterprise grade, but without enterprise budget, quite frankly, uh, and obviously the resources that, that are required to do that. And then they were really looking to ensure that they had a security partner and coverage that could scale with them as their business grows from startup into 
a mature SaaS application uh, that's being used by uh, thousands of customers. So again, we were able to work with them and, and get them to a point where they had that 24-7 visibility and coverage. They were able to take actions on you know, the threat uh, intelligence that we were providing them and very guided and pointed guidance on uh, the remediation and mitigation tactics they need to t take in any scenario where there was a, a threat to their business. Uh, but doing so in a way that was cost effective, easy for them to kind of get off the ground and implement, um, you know, being able to have that enterprise grade security coverage in, in days and weeks, uh, as opposed to taking years to build that up over time. And then making sure that they're able to go to market with a set of solutions that met those uh, healthcare industry regulations, which are very rigorous, very prescriptive, um, you know, something that it's very hard for you to uh, circumnavigate without, you know, addressing from an audit standpoint. And again, here, uh, you know, some great kind of commentary from their director of infrastructure and information security, uh, talking about our ability to free up important resources on their side. So they didn't have to dedicate the people to security that could be used for other initiatives that are ultimately going to be revenue generating and, and led to them, you know, launching and, um, you know, getting success with tremendous uh, SaaS products for healthcare. And again, publicly available case study that you'll find on our website if you want to dig a little deeper into that one. And then finally, the optimization phase. I mean, clearly at this point, you're really looking for ways to look back and understand how can you continue to improve and drive efficiencies back into your business. So making sure that you, know, you have the ability to provide guidance to your organization as they're uh, starting to roll out new releases, new products. How can you ensure that you're providing that uh, you know, kind of security first mentality to your organization by leveraging the partnership with Alert Logic? Uh, so that there's no risk that, you know, as you take these next steps, security hasn't been considered and isn't able to uh, enable that success. We see a lot of organizations, um, you know, starting to, to look at multi-cloud strategies, uh, looking for, you know, specific uh, platforms, whether those are SaaS platforms or PaaS platforms or infrastructure as a service platforms that might be suited to a specific workload. And again, then making sure that they're able to do that without having to go all the way back to the start from a security strategy standpoint. Uh, and then obviously looking to ensure that you've invested in a partnership that is as invested as you are in adopting cloud services and giving you those native integrations to make sure that you can take full advantage of all of these you know, incredible transformative capabilities that AWS continues to bring to the table and innovate. Um, I've been to maybe five or six uh, reinvents in, in my lifetime now, and yeah, every time it astonishes me just the sheer amount of you know, new capability, new products, new launches that come every year from AWS. So making sure that you're in a position to take advantage of all that innovation without compromising security because you're trusting a partnership um, that, that is you know, as committed to making sure that those integrations are viable for you uh, as you are. Um, again, here's just a, an example of a, a customer experience in that optimization phase. Uh, so Bentley Systems was an organization, uh, as I described earlier, that had decided to go down that path of multi-cloud and was really kind of looking at you know, the different needs of different workloads and how to spread that across the different platforms. Um, I needed to also maintain a compliance standard ISO 27001. So giving them the ability to go forward and start to really kind of take that multi-cloud approach and bring it to life by moving workloads from their data centers into different cloud platforms uh, and doing so in a compliant manner uh, and main, maintaining a continuous approach to security and compliance throughout that ever compromising that was a huge win for them. Uh, and again, here what you can see is uh, a great kind of validation of AlertLogic's position here by a uh, solutions engineering manager over at uh, Bentley who had done a pretty you know, significant amount of due diligence on the marketplace and felt that AlertLogic really kind of stood out, that we were very familiar with the broad range of different compliance standards as well as cloud platforms that were out there to make sure that we had kind of, you know, thought from all the different variabilities that they might go through as a customer and gave them uh, a solution that was consistent across the board. So, you know, I think you've probably heard this kind of teased out in some of these examples, but, you know, there's a number of cloud security concerns that we consistently see coming back from organizations. Um, you know, the first is, is really about visibility. Uh, if you can't see it, you can't protect it. Pretty fundamental law there. So making sure that you have the ability to see everything regardless of, you know, what platform it's on and where it is. Uh, gives you the means to then really kind of put the adequate protections in place uh, and, and you know, protect your most important assets to your business. Um, another challenge we run into a lot, and uh, you know, Stephen's probably very well placed to talk to this given uh, the, the, the time that he spent in the industry and the time that SHI has spent advising customers on this. Um, but just because you've you know, maybe solved for security in your data center doesn't mean that those tools and those processes are going to translate to the cloud. Um, that's not always apparent to organizations as they start to embrace their cloud transformation journey. 
Uh, and more often than not, we've seen organizations come to a point in realization uh, that maybe some of those technologies aren't going to come along for the journey with them as they uh, embrace the cloud. So what, what can they do there to offset that risk? How can they make sure that they're future-proofing themselves by making a technology decision that's going to be able to stay the course with them as they adopt different uh, services and platforms? And then again, um, you know, having that cloud security expertise in-house might seem like a, a really uh, you know, obvious kind of ambition for you to have as you start the journey of cloud transformation. But in reality, it's going to be very, very difficult. And as we've touched upon, you know, we really play that role throughout the cloud transformation journey here. So again, just to summarize here, at the migration stage, we're bringing the experts to allow you to go and embrace the cloud. We can make sure that you can do so without having to have concerns around whether you want to embrace more than one cloud platform or maintain a hybrid infrastructure. And we're ensuring that in you know embracing cloud, you're not putting yourselves at risk from a standpoint. As you move into modernization, we're allowing you to really ensure that you can start to build automation and uh, efficiencies into how you're managing vulnerabilities and exposures. And we can accelerate the adoption of those transformative uh, services and, and practices that really allow you to, to, to go from experimenting in cloud to it becoming you know, absolutely pivotal to, to how your organization runs. And then in the optimization phase, we're enabling you to continuously improve and drive efficiencies back into your business by adopting those new technologies, by being able to start to take a workload-centric approach to multi-cloud, and by ensuring that the key native integrations that are important to your success on the AWS cloud uh, are, are also key native integrations for us uh, to um, you know, ensure that our security solutions have the coverage across all the different platforms and services that you're looking to adopt. So um, and I think we've covered a bit of this in the previous slide, but you know, allowing you to really then start to drive towards automation, native integration, giving you that single view across all of your assets and platforms and giving you simplified vulnerability, uh, visibility, should I say, ensuring that you can adopt configuration best practices and giving you the, the confidence that you can maintain your compliance posture and standards uh, uh, throughout the cloud journey. And we're doing so in a way that's delivered entirely as a managed services, uh, managed services, managed detection and response on AWS. So to summarize, we've got you covered regardless of uh, the infrastructure decisions you're making and the platforms you want to adopt. We're going to give you a common uh, solution to those challenges um, and, and you know, do so in a way that comes from years of securing cloud workload with AWS and other platforms. Uh, we're going to come with you on the journey, but regardless of where you start the journey with Alert Logic, even if you're at the very late stages of your cloud journey, we believe we can be incredibly valuable to you. And we're combining everything uh, here, our technology, our experts, our research, to ultimately give you an advantage as you go through digital transformation, delight your customers, uh, and really start to maintain an advantage over the competition. So that's everything I had to talk to you about today. Hopefully that's given you a sense of how managed detection and response on AWS can enable cloud success. I wanted to hand over here to Alison Johnson you can help you understand how the role of uh, AWS Marketplace can accelerate you towards getting all of those outcomes by helping you make uh, and purchase the right solutions for your cloud journey. So over to you, Alison. Thanks, Dan. Thanks so much. Um, so earlier, you know, when I gave the intro for AWS about AWS, you know, being 20 years old, Marketplace is about nine years old, developed along the same way that um, Amazon.com Marketplace, a place to bring buyers and sellers of software together. Um, and um, basically, you know, our customers, as they are coming over to AWS and moving their workloads over to the cloud, oftentimes they are um, wrestling with the really large application portfolio and they're trying to figure out what to do with it. Um, we have customers that have thousands of applications um, that they're running in-house, sometimes 4,000, 5,000. Um, so some of the business problems that we help them deal with as they are coming over to AWS and specifically looking to purchase them of uh, those uh, supporting software and services on marketplaces. I mean, what do I do with all of these applications? Like, you know, this is all set up really well for an on-premise environment, but now I'm moving over to the cloud. How much do I keep on-prem? What do I keep hybrid? What do I get rid of? What do I combine into one application? What do I move over to the cloud? What pro product types should I be buying in the cloud? Heard about SaaS. How do I move over into SaaS applications? What about container and serverless? Um, and how do I use cloud native applications? You know, in Marketplace, we have ISVs that have been around for a short amount of time that are producing products that work really well in our environment and are really specific to specific workloads on AWS. So how do I take advantage of those applications as well? So these are some of the issues that we see our customers kind of wrestling with as they come over to um, AWS. Next slide. 
Um, in addition um, to what they're looking for from marketplace as they're um, moving over to AWS, they're also looking for ways to control and govern those purchases, right? So we have customers that have really large organizations where we make it really easy for customers to buy products like Alert Logic in our catalog, but they have um, IT managers in different organizations. They want to govern, they want to make sure um, they, they have oversight into all the purchases that are being made on, on Marketplace. So they're looking for tools to be able to govern those purchases on Marketplace. Um, they're also looking to optimize the scale, right? You know, AWS is very well known for our scaling capability, but being able to make sure that the applications that they buy from Marketplace scale up and scale down as they increase um, usage across their organization. Again, that modernization of their software portfolio, looking to innovate with new software, also looking to Marketplace to give them advice on how to innovate their own procurement process. You know, we provide a very different way of purchasing software in a very automated, point and click methodology kind of pioneered by amazon.com. It's a very different way of purchasing software than the old days of purchase orders and proof of concept trials for six months at a time. And so like, how can they automate their procurement processes and kind of offload some of that to us so they can innovate um, those processes and, and maybe you know streamline some of those um, systems that they use. So all of that plus the ease of use are, are, um, are, are things that are, sorry, can we do the next slide? All of that is, is really similar to what our customers are looking for when they come over to Marketplace. So, you know, nine years old, um, curated catalog, third-party software, and professional services and data that our customers are purchasing today. Marketplace, like any service that market, at, at AWS started um, from a customer. Customer um, got in touch with us and wanted to buy a piece of software through an API nine years ago. And that started the journey. Um, Nine years later, we have over 10,000 listings, um, uh, 1,600 ISPs buying on the marketplace, um, 500 consulting partners. Um, we're deployed in 24 regions, all the regions of AWS, 310,000 monthly active customers, um, 2 million subscriptions. So basically, you know, customers can buy full price products or through a private offer at a discounted price. Um, we have them available in over 50 categories as well, security, storage, networking, all of those. So um, those are some of kind of the high points of Marketplace, some of the reasons why our customers want to come over and buy the ease of use of purchasing, um, ability to retire um, commitments that they have to AWS, ability to get professional services through consulting partners like SHI, ability to get financing, diversity and minority owned credit, um, the wide breadth of products that we have available, um, and the quick, fast uh, process that we have of being able to acquire those um, that software that they need to keep their business innovating and running really quickly as they move over to the cloud. Next slide. A couple of features that we came out with um, since COVID um, that we thought were really important for customers at the time. Number one was financing. So being able, enabling our customers to be able to finance purchases on Marketplace so they can pay um, monthly um, you know, per their consulting partner that they're financing with. SHI is one of the partners that offers that financing on Marketplace. So, um, you know, broadening that, especially as our customers have been asking for it, has been a big value add for our customers. And next slide is, um, our next slide is um, professional, oh, I'm sorry, I thought there was a professional service slide. That's gonna go through. Um, so, okay, sorry. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to turn this back over to Dan then. Um, Dan, you want to take it away? Yeah, thanks, Alison. So, thanks everybody for your time today. I hope you found that informative. Um, you know, to, to recap, we strongly believe that between the three of us, we can really help you, uh, you know, embrace the full potential of the AWS cloud wherever you are in your cloud transformation journey. Ensure that security becomes a huge enabler for your business so that you can continue to innovate, continue to work through the digital transformation processes that are ultimately going to lead to better outcomes for your customers, better outcomes for your business stakeholders, and do so in a way that you know really doesn't require you to have to go and build all of that out yourselves and you know go and find the resources, the people, the process technology to be able to do a good job of that. Um, so thank you very much for your time. Uh, there'll be means for you to engage with us as part of the follow-up from this uh, this webinar. So thanks again to Alison and Stephen. I'll, I'll turn over to you in case you have any closing comments.
Thanks, Simon, for your time. No problem. Anything from you, Stephen, before we wrap up? Uh, no, just a big thank you to Allison and to yourself. Uh, great partnership between AWS and Alert Logic and SHI. Uh, and I think together we've got uh, all of the resources, capabilities, and the solutions that our joint customers need out there in the marketplace. And uh, it'd be great to hear from everybody uh, following this webinar to uh, to have a better chance to dig deep into uh, into that opportunity. So thanks again. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody.